Tourists visit them daily, scrambling for the perfect selfie with some of the world's best-known attractions. But I'm sure you're unaware of these little secrets some of these places are hiding. I promise that today, you will look at these world-famous monuments in a new way. Did you know that the Statue of Liberty has a second name? The Liberty Enlightening the World. And what's hidden in a box under the statue, right here? This massive structure stands watch over the entrance to New York Harbor, welcoming travelers from around the world. And there is a lot about this beautiful lady that may surprise you. Designed by sculptor Frédéric Bartholdi, France gifted it to the United States in 1884. That's a pretty nice present, but there was a catch. Already built and much too big to move, it was dismantled entirely, packed into 200 crates, and shipped across the ocean. Then, workers put it back together in New York like a giant 3D puzzle. And though many assume the statue is made of stone, it is not. The outside is actually thin sheets of metal. Originally, Bartholdi wanted these sheets to be made of pure gold, creating a truly impressive sight. But at 305 feet tall, the expense was too great. He opted for copper, a cheaper material instead. The one drawback, copper turns green over time. When the metal comes in contact with oxygen, it results in a chemical reaction called oxidation. The Statue of Liberty was originally the color of a shiny new penny. Not as impressive as gold, but pretty spectacular. For 25 years, it changed to a darker brown. Then, slowly faded to the light green it is today. Because the statue is hollow, you can actually go inside and walk up to her head. I hope you've been working out though, you have to climb 354 stairs to make it to the crown. Though initially open to visitors, the torch is now out of bounds. It was damaged in 1916 and has remained closed ever since. Maybe avoid visiting when the weather is bad. In heavy winds, the Statue of Liberty sways up to 3 inches, while the torch can move as much as 5 inches. I would turn as green as the statue itself. Oh, and it's hit by nearly 600 bolts of lightning every year. Shocking, I know. There's also a secret box tucked away beneath the statue. It contains a copy of the US Constitution, 20 bronze medals, and a portrait of the statue's designer. Another well-known monument takes us over the Atlantic Ocean to Paris, France. It's the Eiffel Tower. And though appreciated now, did you know it was once so disliked it almost never got built? Or that the engineer added a special floor just for himself when the tower went up? Engineer Gustav Eiffel built it for the 1889 World's Fair. At 1,083 feet tall, it's the same height as an 81-story building. Once finished, it was the tallest human-made structure in the world and remained the tallest for 41 years until the construction of the Chrysler Building in New York City. Before being built, the public received a sneak peek of the designs. People were not impressed. They called it everything from a truly tragic street lamp to a belfry skeleton. And residents, along with the Champ de Mars where the tower was going to be built, actually went to court to block its construction. But authorities sided with Eiffel, and the tower was finally built. Gustav asked the designer of the tower, Maurice Kochlin, to include an apartment at the very top for his private use. It offered a 360-degree view of Paris and had a living room, big enough for a table, a couch, and a piano, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. Talk about a luxury penthouse in the sky. Let's take a quick hop over to London next to check out the Big Ben. But which part of the structure does the name actually refer to? You might be surprised. Big Ben is actually the name of the bell, not the tower. That's right. You're more likely to hear Big Ben than see it. It's located in the Clock Tower, which was renamed Elizabeth Tower in 2012. And the only visitors allowed to enter Elizabeth Tower and see Big Ben are residents of the United Kingdom. Everyone else can only admire it from afar. Pity. The bell weighs 16 tons, the same as four and a half hippos, and is seven feet tall. Not far from here is the impressive London Eye, Europe's biggest wheel at 443 feet tall. 
Less than 30 years old, it still has its secrets. In this case, they involve the number 13, a little romance, and tortoises. There are 32 climate-controlled observation capsules on the giant wheel, but they numbered them from 1 to 33. What? The reason is simple. Designers skipped the number 13 because of its association with bad luck. Next time you take an elevator, you'll notice there's no 13th floor in most buildings for the same superstitious reason. The 32 capsules represent the 32 boroughs, or areas of London. And it is a top-rated tourist destination, receiving more visitors than the Taj Mahal or Stonehenge. And who knew a giant wheel could be romantic? At least 5,000 marriage proposals and over 500 weddings have taken place here. Not a fan of scary rides? You got nothing to worry about. The London Eye moves at a very slow 10 inches per second, which is twice as fast as a tortoise moving at top speed. The ride doesn't even stop to let people on and off. Back to the United States for this next famous monument, the Hollywood Sign. Did you know that it used to be bigger? Or the reason it was built in the first place? Don't worry, I'm about to share all its secrets. Developers S. H. Woodruff and Tracy E. Schultz built the original sign in 1923, creating it to advertise real estate. The two men wanted to establish a new neighborhood called Hollywoodland, and the now iconic sign was simply meant to be a giant advertisement to draw home buyers to the area. They planned to remove it after 18 months. In fact, the original sign spelled out Hollywoodland. The city dropped the last four letters in 1949. And now, you can only appreciate it from a distance. Tourists are not allowed anywhere near the actual sign. Standing in your way, razor wire, motion sensors, infrared technology, and alarms. There are even helicopter patrols. Yikes! Let's head north to Canada next, to the city of Toronto. When you search along its skyline, you'll see its most famous landmark, the impressive CN Tower. At 1,815 feet tall, it's pretty hard to miss. But what treasure does it hide in a special time capsule tucked away in its walls? It took a whole year for 1,500 workers to build a tower, completing construction in 1974. Two years later, it was open to the public. Afraid of heights? It might not be a tourist attraction for you. First, the elevators have glass sides and a glass floor as well. It takes 58 seconds, speeding at 15 miles per hour to take you from the ground floor to the observation deck in the sky. And the deck also has glass panels on the floor. Don't worry though, you're not going to fall through. They're so strong that they can handle the weight of 35 moose. Hmm, I wonder how they tested that. When the tower opened in 1976, a time capsule was hidden in the wall of the lookout level. Inside, you'll find newspapers, Canadian coins, letters from children, and a letter from Pierre Trudeau. The capsule will remain there until 2076. And there's more! Mount Rushmore actually has a hidden room behind Abraham Lincoln's head, but what's inside? Sculptor Gutzon Borglum initially had a much bolder design in mind, including moments in American history with the four heads of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Lincoln. But his ideas were too ambitious. Instead, he was given permission to create a Hall of Records, a secret chamber that would highlight the history of the United States and any important documents. And finally, what's the secret color-changing magic of the Taj Mahal in India? And the reason is surprisingly simple. The large building can be found in the city of Agra in the northern part of the country. It was built by Shah Jahan as a monument and a tomb for his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Construction started in 1632 and wasn't completed until 1647. White marble covers the outside of the building and is decorated in jewels like lapis lazuli, jade, turquoise, and amethyst. These are placed to create geometric and floral patterns. But if you look at photos of the building, it doesn't always look the same. The color changes depending on the time of day. It has a lot to do with how the sun reflects off the marble. It may seem pinker at dawn. 
pure white at noon and an orange bronze at sunset. Some evenings, it may even look translucent blue. A second building was planned, designed by the Shah himself. It was a dark reflection of the original. Instead of white, the plan called for black marble. They never completed it. It's incredible how even more impressive these already cool monuments seem when you know a few of their secrets.